Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. It's time for our monthly update into GPU pricing and availability, a series that has been running since March of this year, which has given us a lot of useful insights into the current state of the GPU market. Obviously, graphics cards are still a little bit difficult to purchase at reasonable prices in most regions, but the month of August in particular has seen a number of developments that I think are worth talking about. So firstly, we're still facing a number of complications that are affecting GPU pricing. If you're new to this series, basically in the past we've described this as a multi-factor situation. A lot of people are quick to place all the blame on one area or another area, but the reality is there are many contributing factors. As we sit here in August, high demand for gaming GPUs, cryptocurrency mining, supply shortages for key graphics card components, limited wafer allocations at fabs, logistics issues due to the global pandemic, tariffs, and several other reasons are all contributing to the current state of the market. It's quite a complicated situation and there is no one reason that we can point the finger at. With that said, a couple of weeks ago we asked you guys, the hardware unboxed audience, what factor you blame the most for current GPU prices. And I don't think it's too surprising to see 41% of people respond saying global supply constraints for components, while a further 32% placed the most blame on cryptocurrency mining. As it stands right now, these two factors do appear to be the most significant. Interestingly though, only 5% of people placed the most blame on high demand from PC gamers. Without high demand, there would be no shortage as both supply and demand go hand in hand, but it doesn't look like too many people were willing to blame the gamers on this occasion. Let's talk a little bit about what has happened this month. Of the major updates to the GPU market, well, there has of course been the launch of the AMD Radeon RX 6600 XT, which I think it's fair to say received only lukewarm reception due to its high MSRP, position as a 1080p GPU, and issues such as the limited x8 PCIe bus. There was some hope that a new mid-range GPU would help shift graphics card prices lower, so are we seeing that in the market today? Well, from some angles, the answer is yes. As we talked about in our recent video investigating whether AMD lied about 6600 XT stock and availability, it's clear that the 6600 XT launched in reasonable quantities, far higher than any recent GPU launch in memory. This means that if you really do want to spend around the $400 to $500 US mark, then depending on your region, it is now easier to buy a GPU. Here in Australia, we are a week and a half post-launch, and you can still find 6600 XTs for as little as 680 Australian dollars, $100 above the local MSRP, but significantly cheaper than NVIDIA's RTX 3060 and RTX 3060 Ti. It's unlikely we'll see these GPUs hit the actual MSRP again anytime soon, with retailers describing this $680 price as more the true MSRP based on the shipments they are seeing. And as we discussed at length in that 6600 XT pricing video, despite these seemingly attractive prices, 6600 XTs aren't exactly flying off shelves for a range of reasons that we go in depth on, so it's well worth a watch. But there is no doubting that in this mid-range segment, GPUs are now available at lower prices than in prior months. We are also starting to see some movement on pricing for graphics cards around the 6600 XT. In particular, we are seeing increased shipments of GeForce RTX 3060 Ti GPUs with LHR functionality. We've seen many more limited runs of cheaper RTX 3060 Ti's in the past few weeks than in prior months, which seems to be NVIDIA's response to the 6600 XT. It's been pretty crazy to see some RTX 3060 Ti models available for less than the current going price for the RTX 3060, and retailers are telling us that as soon as they get stock they can price below a thousand Australian dollars, they just fly off shelves. With that said, due to the relatively recent launch of the 6600 XT, we aren't yet seeing any further flow-on effects in other parts of the market. The RTX 3070 and 6700 XT still remain quite expensive, and higher-end models are either completely unavailable or still sitting on shelves at ridiculously inflated prices. So that's something to keep an eye on in upcoming months. We also recently asked you guys what position you are currently in with your GPU, and a higher proportion than ever have said that they have managed to buy a current gen GPU. Of the respondents that do want to upgrade and aren't fine with their current GPU, just under half have been able to buy a new GPU, while around 40% are still waiting for price reductions. A further 11% of this group said there are no GPUs in their price range, indicating they are waiting for more entry-level cards to hit the market, like a GeForce RTX 3050 type product. 
when we asked you four months ago, the split was roughly 40 to 60 between people who have bought a new GPU and those waiting to buy. Today, the split from our audience is more 55-45, so demand is slowly being satisfied as expected. The other major updates this month concern the cryptocurrency market and crypto mining. I don't want to spend ages talking about mining and there have been a lot of things going on, so I'll just quickly summarize the main points you'll need to know about how this affects GPU pricing. Since our last update, the price of popular coins such as Ethereum has risen substantially. Previously, we were looking at a price a little below $2,000. Now Ethereum is worth slightly above $3,000. Crypto is always a bit volatile in pricing, but the rough gains we are seeing month on month are about 60% for this currency and similar for others. These gains have flattened out a bit over the last week. With gains in value come gains in difficulty. Ethereum difficulty has spiked recently to almost the highest ever level, reducing block rewards for miners, though it does indicate increased interest in mining, which perhaps isn't so much of a good thing. Miners are getting less Ethereum from mining as a result, though the value of these coins has increased. Also affecting Ethereum mining in particular this month was the rollout of the new EIP-1559 protocol upgrade. If you want to research exactly what this is, be my guest, but if you're not into cryptocurrency, it'll likely bore you to death. If you're more interested in how this actually affects mining revenue, well, the answer is simple. Due to the way it burns transaction fees, it reduces the payout to miners for processing transactions. Like with difficulty spikes though, while the reward in Ethereum mining is now lower, the value of Ethereum has increased, so it's a tug of war situation. Software developers have also found a way to partially bypass the limit on NVIDIA's light hash rate GPUs, increasing the cap on Ethereum mining performance from 50% to roughly 70%. LHR cards still are less desirable for mining compared to the non-LHR variants, but are more desirable than previously. The final point to talk about with mining is that with all these recent updates, higher Ethereum prices but lower payouts and all of that, actually mining Ethereum isn't always what miners are doing these days on their GPUs. On some cards, coins such as Raven or Ergo have been more profitable recently, though as more people jump on those coins, then difficulty spikes on those coins too, and so on, you get similar things like what we're seeing with Ethereum. So. If I had to summarize GPU mining right now, the value of crypto has gone up significantly in the past month, around 60%, but the profitability of mining has risen to a more modest degree, around 20 to 30% month on month. Combined with the release of the 6600 XT and increased GPU supply, how has that affected the GPU market? Much to my surprise, the scalper market on eBay has remained relatively flat comparing completed sales from the past week to the same time last month. With a big spike in coin value, I was expecting the market to react in a more dramatic way, more in line with what we saw back in May when GPU prices were at their worst. But that hasn't been the case with most GPUs only fluctuating in price here or there by a few percent. Of course, there are some outliers. The GeForce RTX 3070 was the most in-demand card in August, with prices rising the most of any current generation NVIDIA GPU. Meanwhile, the RTX 3060 Ti went in the opposite direction, with a 6% price reduction on average due to what appears to be the influx of LHR limited models like we discussed earlier. On the AMD side, very similar to NVIDIA's current generation GPUs. The RX 6900 XT increased in price by the highest amount, possibly due to a greater than expected drop in price last month, so a bit of a correction there. The card with the most volume and in the closest competition to the RTX 3070, the Radeon RX 6700 XT, did increase in price by about 8%. Meanwhile, the scalper volume of AMD's higher-end GPUs is currently very low, suggesting that AMD is mostly making their mid-range offerings at the moment. 6600 XT volume was also very low, likely because the volume available to buy at retail was pretty strong and at better prices, though some people did get sucked into paying $630 on average, which is well above what you'd be able to get at retail. While these numbers are an aggregate of all new GPUs sold through eBay in that time frame, there is a difference in price between LHR and non-LHR cards, so if you are a gamer that doesn't care about mining, there is a chance the GPUs have actually gotten cheaper for you if you are okay buying an LHR variant. The most stark difference for this right now is with the RTX 3060 Ti. While the average sale price on eBay in the time frame we measured was around $950, most LHR cards were actually selling for around $850, which is the lowest ever price for this GPU. However, 
If you want a non-LHR model, like the Founders Edition card or certain other models, you're looking at having to spend at least $1,250. So that's a 47% price hike for 43% higher mining performance after factoring in the latest LHR bypasses. It's similar for models like the RTX 3080. Average sale price of $1,643. However, LHR cards are going for more like $1,400 to $1,500, while non-LHR variants are in the $1,800 plus range. Again, for gamers, there is no reason to spend that extra money on the non-LHR variant because the LHR cards are identical for gaming. We recently received an ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 3080 LHR variant to test, and Steve found it was the same as the non-LHR card in gaming performance with the same cooler design and thermals. This is similar for most LHR GPUs, and with the majority of new GPUs hitting the market from NVIDIA now being LHR variants, there's really nothing to worry about here for gamers. Miners do get screwed, but I think gamers probably enjoy a little bit of that. This discrepancy between LHR and non-LHR pricing is also why we see quite odd pricing trends, such as why the RTX 3060 and RTX 3070 are relatively poor value, while the 3060 Ti and 3080 are looking a bit better. The tide seems to have shifted for the 3060 Ti and 3080 to being mostly LHR releases, while there are still lots of non-LHR 3060s and 3070s being sold. NVIDIA says the vast majority of GPUs moving forward will be LHR variants, which will hopefully see prices continue to decrease over time. What happens in the new GPU market is usually reflected in the used market, and that's also true this month. Prices for NVIDIA's RTX 20 series of GPUs were relatively flat month on month after two consecutive months of double-digit price drops. For some reason, the RTX 2080 Ti increased in price by 10%. However, most other GPUs in the lineup saw no price difference. Similar in the GeForce 16 series, where most cards saw virtually no difference in price. This is where having a lot of RX 6600 XTs at MSRP would be nice, as those with GTX 1660s could upgrade at virtually no cost after selling their old GPU. In the older GeForce 10 series, prices have risen slightly across the board, particularly for the higher-end models like the GTX 1080 Ti. However, the mid-priced options of today, like the GTX 1070 Ti, remain largely unchanged. It also appears that the volume of these older GPUs being sold is slowly reducing as first-time owners upgrade to newer GPUs. Then we get to AMD's Radeon RX 5000 series, and like in prior months, it makes absolutely no sense for a gamer to consider these GPUs as a used upgrade option. The prices of cards like the 5700 XT remain high, as RDNA is an exceptionally good mining architecture, punching well above its weight, which is keeping prices high. If owners of the 5700 XT haven't already upgraded to something like the 6700 XT basically for free, then they should be seriously considering it if gaming is their primary use for these cards. The volume of AMD's older high-end cards like Vega 56 and 64 has fallen away quite a bit in the last few months, and for this month prices have risen substantially, as they too are quite capable mining GPUs. Meanwhile, in the lower part of the market, prices have risen somewhat for cards like the RX 588GB, though not to a more significant degree than other GPUs. It's still the case today where if you have around the $300 to $400 mark to spend and you desperately want a GPU, you're much better off buying a GTX 1060 6GB than you are getting an RX 588 GB with the RX 580 a more powerful and more sought after card for mining. But that said, it's not like either of those two options seem like particularly great value as they're both priced above their MSRP from when they launched like five years ago. After two months of seeing GPU prices fall slowly and cards become more available on retail shelves, it's hard to know what to make of this month's GPU pricing. For the most part, GPU prices are still terrible and very poor value, and unfortunately, throughout the last month, we didn't see any further reductions to GPU prices on the used or scalper markets. This is pretty disappointing for the 30% of our audience that are still waiting for better GPU prices before they jump in and make a purchase. I really have mixed feelings here because while GPU prices haven't fallen, they haven't risen substantially either, which I take as a positive given the current cryptocurrency market. With Ethereum prices skyrocketing this month and profitability up not just for Ether but other coins as well, seeing this cause only GPU price stagnation rather than a massive spike, uh, it's pretty good news. Not ideal, but better news than what we could have seen. There are also a few other glimmers of positivity here. NVIDIA are clearly transitioning significant parts of their GPU lineup to LHR GPUs, which are now forming the majority of sales for some graphics cards such as the RTX 3060 Ti. 
Even with the latest developments raising the LHR limit cap, these cards are more accessible and affordable for gamers. Now, the LHR program has received its share of criticism, so it will be interesting to hear from you guys what you think of it now that it seems to be helping lower GPU prices. Based on what we've seen over the last few months, I still think that GPU prices will continue to fall slowly over the next few months, but there's still question marks over whether pricing will ever return to MSRP levels. It's still not clear whether the MSRP is actually achievable given component shortages and ridiculous logistics costs. However, there are some clear pathways to better GPU prices, and I think there's still a lot of room for prices to get cheaper, even if they don't necessarily go all the way down to the MSRP. Nvidia needs to keep shipping only LHR GPUs to AIBs from now on for their entire lineup where LHR cards have been announced. Miners may hate it, but cards with reduced mining performance are better for gamers, and there's always the uncapped RTX 3090 if you need something without restrictions. AMD also has a big role to play here. The Radeon RX 6700 XT and 6600 XT are the two best GPUs on the market right now for cost per frame, which I believe has led to the gears finally ticking over on RTX 3060 Ti production, the great pressure of competition. While these GPUs have far from a perfect price tag, especially the 6600 XT, if AMD can pump out these GPUs and keep prices as close to the MSRP as possible, this will have benefits across the market. Anyway, that's it for August's GPU pricing update. It'll be interesting to see what happens in September of 2021, and as we start heading into the holiday season, where perhaps demand for GPUs will increase, which could cause all sorts of problems. But like I said, I still expect the general trend of GPU pricing to get lower over time, just slowly, which is what we've been seeing lately. Anyway, if you're interested in supporting the channel and the testing and benchmarking analysis that we do, please consider supporting us through buying some of our merch. We've got our hardware unavailable design restocked and ready to go. If you're interested in that, link's in the description below. There's also our Patreon and Floatplan accounts down there as well if you're interested. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.